Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year to everyone. This video marks the start of my camper van rebuild and in this video I'm going to be detailing the 10 reasons why I've decided to strip out this interior and start again. I was planning to sell this van on with this conversion already done and then buying another van but I just fell in love with this van so I'm going to strip out the interior and start again. So when I bought this van it was already pretty much converted, it had everything you needed, um, all the basics and I bought it semi-converted so I could just get out on the road and see what I actually wanted from my own build. So the first reason comes down to layout. This camper van has a, a bed that you have to make up every night and then pack it away in the daytime. For me and my partner that's very annoying, uh, you just want to jump in the front and go. Um, my next van build I'm going to be putting a fixed double bed at the back of the van and it's going to be a standard size double bed. I know lots of you would think, oh yeah, that's all right, we can do that, no problem. But it does get really um, tedious having to do that every day, to the point where we just left it made up and used the back doors to come in and out, which you can do. So the next van build is going to have a fixed double bed at the back. My second point is the lack of insulation. When I bought this van, I didn't really think too much about insulation. I thought, Oh, it looks pretty good build inside. Yeah, I just go with that one. Um, I love the Mark V Transits. I know they've got really reliable engines, strong running gear. So I'll go with that van. But it wasn't until the winter time that I realised about the lack of insulation. And also in the summer, when it gets absolutely sweltering in here, that it's really important to insulate your van properly. As you can see down here, there's no insulation between the van floor and the interior floor. And it's also not got any vapour barrier, so that needs to be taken into consideration because if you don't have that vapour barrier, you're going to get condensation on the inside of the van and that's no good for a transit because they're prone to rust anyway. Um, you don't want to speed up that reaction. Reason number three, modernisation. I'm currently sitting in Granny's lounge. As you can see, I've got these lovely cushions. It just looks a bit old and shabby in here. I mean, the guy did a fantastic job using an old camp caravan interior. It's a real budget build. He's used the lightweight materials out of a caravan and he's just pieced it together in here. And it looks pretty good, to be honest. It is from the 1980s and it could definitely do with modernising. So in the next build, I'm going to be aiming for a nice modern look. Um, so you've got the vintagey sort of look of the Mark V Transit from the outside and then when you come in it will open up to a nice modern feel and utilising all the space that I can. Right, reason number four, rust proofing and repairs from the inside. Now being a transit, I know there's going to be rust under this floor and we're going to have to sort it out. There might even be a few holes. So once I've stripped out the complete interior, it will allow me to work on the, the rust issues um, so that I know that it's sound from the inside out. I've done lots of work around other areas of the van such as the A pillars and um, the front floor had a little bit of rot on it and lots of the body panels although some of those have started bubbling up again so it might be a case of having to replace the whole panels eventually um, but until then we'll just ignore that and work on the inside. You never get anything done if you fixate on all the little things. There's currently some rust underneath the sliding door runner so in order for me to treat and deal with that rust I'm gonna have to take the ply lining off the inside of the van I believe to access the nuts which hold that sliding door runner on so it'll be a good opportunity for me to sort all the rust out with all this old interior out. Point number five the mains light switch okay so when you come to the van at night there's no mains light switch by the door so you have to feel around get your phone out, get the torch out, hunt around for the light switch which is located all the way up there. It's right in the middle of the van which is no good. So in the new build I'm going to be moving the light switches so they're easily, access easily accessible from the sliding door and then that way you can just reach in, turn your lights on and away you go. I did overcome this by installing some mood lights around here and then having the remote control 
just above the slide-in door so when you come in you could feel around for the remote control and then turn on the mood lights just so you've got a little bit of light to make your way up and then find the light switch. All these little things um, bug me and I want this van to be right. Okay, point number six, skylights. These are very old skylights, they're the original ones I think from the caravan that the guy used. Having been in the sun for many many years, all the plastic's gone brittle. In high winds, the one at the far end blew off, never to be seen again. So I made a new top cover for that skylight, just to patch it up for now, but it will need new skylights. We stayed at a campsite in Land's End, there was a storm going on, and this skylight was buffeting like this. It was literally hanging on a wing and prayer. So I had to put loads of cable ties around it and strap it down. Um, it's just no good really. But I would have much rather been in this van than the poor people that were in a tent next to us because <laughs> it was um, yeah, quite traumatic for them, I think. Reason number seven, space for shower. This van's got plenty of space. It's got a little toilet room at the back, but it hasn't got quite enough room for a shower. Um, I've looked at putting a shower tray in there in the past and it won't fit, so it needs to be completely stripped apart and rebuilt to put a shower in here. That's one thing we miss when we're on the road is having a nice shower, so I'm going to incorporate that in the next build and have a shower inside the van. Point number eight is the wiring and electrical side of this van conversion. It's a little bit questionable in places. Uh, a few chalky blocks here and there, which I don't really like to see. We're going to go about redoing all the electrics. There's a few cables at the back which are chafing. You want to have it easy so you can fault find on your van. Have all the fuses labelled up properly. You just don't have that in this van, it's a bit of trial and error. I understand that it was done on a budget, but um, you shouldn't really compromise the electrical side. Also the gas side I want to check out and make sure that that's all up to standard. I'm going to be running the new gas pipe from the uh, regulator to the hob and make sure that there's no leaks in between. Currently, every time I use the cooker I go outside and I turn the gas bottle off just as a precaution. And I'll probably continue to do that as well to be honest because I think it's a good method for making sure you're not going to gas your van out. So once I've done the conversion I'll get that checked over by um, a qualified gas engineer to make sure that it's all sound that's always worthwhile doing if you're a little bit unsure about gas or electrics just make sure you get it looked over by um, a qualified professional i'm thinking of more points as i'm sitting here i'm just looking at the laminate flooring and it's a bit skew with in places it's been laid on top of carpet underlay so there's a bit of movement there that's no good so i won't be doing that in the next build i've always wanted to do my own van conversion and now's the time for me to get stuck in. It's really exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to doing this build and hopefully you'll find the videos interesting as I'm going through. I never used the microwave since I've had the van so that's going to be going in the next build. All the kitchen units look a bit shabby. Really old-fashioned sink. I'll show you all this as I'm going through the video. The water tank hasn't got a vent on it so when you turn the pump on it sucks the tank in so you have to open the lid to let the air go into the tank. That's no good. There's a set of drawers here and they always get jammed, you know, they've not got nice runners, they're just running on the wood, wood against wood. They're going to be going. This big cupboard in the middle, um, we just use it for junk really. It would be nice to have a garage area at the back of the van where you can put everything that you don't want to look at, like your camping chairs um, and your gas cookers, things like that. Just keep them out of the way of the living space so you don't have to look at it. And my final point is that this van deserves better. It deserves a nice new interior. It's a great van and it will see many more years on the road. As I come from an engineering background myself, designers are forever overcomplicating systems and it's a breath of fresh air coming to work on this transit because everything's so simple, you can work on it yourself. It just makes life much easier. Admittedly, this van probably doesn't get the best fuel economy and it is quite slow, especially up hills. But the advantage is it's going to get you where you want to go and you're not in a hurry to get there so it's a nice opportunity to slow things down a little bit and enjoy life because that's what we're here for at the end of the day it's enjoying ourselves that's me done i'm going to stop rambling on now the camera battery is about to die so thank you for watching as always i hope you enjoy this series and the next video will be me stripping this van out and getting it ready for the build if you subscribe to the channel and click that little alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. 
thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers guys, take care.